The blood drained from her face and she stared at him, taking in his handsome features greedily. Oh, but he was so handsome. Even now when he looked as if he would like nothing better than to kill her. He was in the company of some men in dark suits, no doubt having a business lunch. She thought as her eyes traveled the length of him, and she wondered if he was feeling as empty as she was. It gave her some measure of satisfaction to think that he was suffering too. You look like you've seen a ghost, Mike interjected following her gaze with his eyes. Mma tore her eyes from Uchi and gave him a dazzling smile. Do you know those men? She didn't see any point in lying. One of them happens to be my ex fiance No wonder. You still love him? Of course I still love him. But she checked herself before that could come out of her mouth. We just broke up a few days ago. Naturally, it is not long enough for you to get over him. Obviously, you think it is long enough? She beat out. Sorry. Don't bite my head off. I'm just a guy interested in you. And it is rather agonizing to my ego to see that you prefer another man. She couldn't believe his selfishness. He didn't even stop to think how much he could be hurting just sitting there and watching Uchi. All he was interested in was his non-existent feelings for her. She thought irritated. Even if he was the last man on earth, she would never consider him. The likes of Mike could only appeal to immature girls who might be impressed by his Americanized accent and looks. She was relieved when the waiter brought their food. She used eating as an excuse to keep quiet, only nodding to his chattering and answering his questions in monosyllables. Just my luck that Mr. Handsome showed up and spoiled my lucky day. I am sure he didn't figure we would be here. Nor did we. I just blamed fate. Only us can decide if we are going to have a messed up day. I can see it is hardly over between the two of you. What are you implying? I mean, I can see vividly the sparks flying to and fro between you two. Now, who is spoiling the day? Asked Mama. I was just making an observation. We just broke up a few days ago. What do you expect? That one party hates the other passionately for causing her heartache. Why you are so bent on discussing Uche is over me, she said almost angrily. I just want to know if I stand a chance and what that chance is. I am not ready to jump into another relationship, she told him clearly, and certainly not with you, she added to herself. Let's forget Uche and enjoy a perfect meal. He is not easy to forget. Not when he is looking at me as if he wants to tear me apart limb by limb. He has no violent bone in his body, as if I believe that. You heard from an authority, she smiled at him. Mike gave her a hard stare. I know a violent man when I see one. Living in New York as a black man has taught me some survival instincts, some of which are recognizing a violent man when I see one. Mama tactfully remained silent. She was tired of talking about Uche and she regretted coming out with Mike. The man was sucking like an old mother-in-law. Okay, she agreed. Maybe Uche looked dangerous, sitting there and shooting daggers with his eyes. Suddenly, Mike stood up and she looked up. I am going to the gents. She watched him leave. A movement caught her eyes a few tables away, and she looked up and saw Uche advancing towards her like a panther after its prey. She met his eyes and gave him an icy look. So, he began as he got to her table and sat down comfortably. Anybody seeing him would think he just wanted to greet an acquaintance, but she knew better. She could see the eyes pecking in his eyes. It didn't take you long to find a replacement. You did that pretty faster than I did. You are still bent on believing that? It is what the eye sees that the brain interprets. Sometimes, things are not usually what they seem. On that, I couldn't agree more. She smiled at him sarcastically. One day, he chanted, I would regret not believing your lies. But we both know that day would never come. Oh, don't be too sure. Why you still bother with me, I can't tell. I hardly bother about you now. Only for that day when the truth will dawn on you. Get out of here, Uche. Or I'll have you thrown out for harassing a customer. I own this place. Ma didn't for one second doubt him.
He had his hands on every available pie when it came to business. If you would please leave, as you can see my date is on his way back. If only you bed nicely, I most definitely will not. Then I will stay. There is some certain appeal in finding out what kind of guy you are dating now. Are you not keeping your associates waiting? I happen to be the boss. Somehow, Mma knew that the Uche she first met had returned, but fiercer and more arrogant. Gone was the loving man who courted her. In any case, she still preferred his company to that of Mike, though she would rather die than admit that to Uche. Uche, please leave. I am begging you. Mike was already upon them, and Mma could see how easily Uche intimidated him. With the aura of wealth and charisma he exuded from every pore of his magnificent body, Mike looked from Uche to Mma puzzled. I am Mike, and you are? Mike asked, trying to regain his lost composure. I will see you later, Mma, Uche said, ignoring Mike arrogantly. Mma was speechless. She couldn't believe his arrogance. What kind of monster were you going to marry? How dare you call him that? She asked without thinking. You have the grace to defend him? She heaved a sigh. That is because I know he's not a monster. He would make a formidable enemy and to top the crown. He looks wealthy. He is Uche Okoha. Mike whistled. I would have loved to have met him on a neutral ground, you know, without you between us. What do you mean by that? I have dreams only guys like him could fulfill. I don't understand, stated Mma. Let's just say every businessman needs an investor like him. You know it's not fair that guys like him have more than their fair share, while the rest of us have to struggle for the crumbs under their table. Mma stared at him shocked. First of all, it is not his fault that he was born rich, but he was also born intelligent, because he didn't remain at the top by giving in to every Tom, Dick and Harry who comes along with a brilliant but fake business idea. If he was that intelligent, why did he let you go? Take me back to my office. I am only asking so I don't hurt your pride. I can easily get myself back. I am not going to trick your Uche. I might even have to buy a ticket before I see him. I was only teasing you, he said getting to his feet. Ma stood up feeling drained and tired. With one last look at Uche, who seemed immersed in what he was doing, she began to leave. He had already forgotten that she was in the room. She realized then that he was saying the truth when he said he didn't bother about her anymore. She thought with bitterness as she walked out of the restaurant. She wished she didn't accept this foolish date, she thought miserably. It was a total disaster and a nightmare. Meeting Uche made it even worse. Honestly. The idea that he might want her back for revenge was horrible to her. How she even jumped to his defense was beyond her. It only went to prove that nothing had changed for her. She glanced at Mike and hated every miserable second she spent with him. How did Phyllis get saddled with this hateful crook as a friend? Imagine him thinking of duping Uche and having the gods to say to her presence. Then she understood the reason why Phyllis was adamant that she did not accept the date in the first place. He knew what a miserable company his friend's son was going to make, but she turned a deaf ear to him because she was afraid of telling him her engagement was off. As soon as she got back to the office, she decided it would be the first thing she would do. She saw no reason for the delay. It was not as if she and Uche were getting back together. Deep inside, she knew she was hoping for a reunion. Mike stopped the car in front of her boutique and turned to her. Despite Mr. Bologna spoiling the day, I enjoyed it. Ma couldn't say the same, but she smiled and nodded at him. So, how about if we try it again? Let's say this evening. Thank you, but I can't. I've got my two hands full this evening. Surely you can find time. I am talking about dinner, and you don't work at night, do you? I do, and I'm behind schedule as it is now, so I work every night to meet up. I guess I'll have to make the time for the two of us. See you soon. Thank you for the lunch, she said getting out of the car. The meal or the company? She could only give him a smile. Then we will have to repeat it next time, he stated. Next time it is then, she said politely but evasively. 
Mama got out of the car and released her pent-up breath slowly. She could feel relief flooding back into her body, but it stopped as she turned towards her boutique. She just remembered she had to see Felix. She walked resolutely into the building, heading towards Felix's office. When she got to the door, she stopped. She could hear voices shouting at each other. She thought it was Felix and Tessie having a little fight and turned to go but stopped. That didn't sound like Tessie and they had never had such a heated fight before. She walked to the door meaning to find out. She is my daughter and I want to get to know her. You can't just barge into someone's life. A daughter you left when she was eight months old? Eight months old! Mama gasped with shock. She wanted to turn away but she couldn't do so. Rather, she opened the door and saw Amber, the woman whom she had always adored. The woman she used to daydream was her mother. In her shock, she noticed that gone was all her sophistication and perfect comportment. She was wearing an abaya and no makeup. Her appearance helped make it clear to her that she was not dreaming, that indeed Amber was her mother, the woman who left an eight-month-old baby to go in search of her dreams. Yet, that wasn't even the most painful part of it. The most painful part of it was that Phyllis knew all along and never told her. The two of them were very engrossed in their argument that they didn't notice her. I might have left her when she needed me most, but I was never that far from her, Felix, and you know it. In my way, I have watched over her. I was there for her when she had no one. Amber, Mama doesn't need you now, and if you have any heart at all, you will stay away from her and leave her in peace, or at least until we find a way to ease her into the idea. She needs me now, Felix. Oh, you haven't told her. I am waiting for her to come back so I can tell her face to face. Mama wanted to make her presence known, but she was more than curious about the secret Amber was talking about. She needs me more than ever now. She's broke, Phyllis. She needs her mother now. First of all, she didn't need Amber. And what does she mean, broke? Mama was puzzled. How was she broke? She's getting married to a billionaire. Then you don't know her, Amber rejoined. At that point, she had had enough. She was dying inside. She had lost the love of her life. Her mother had just shown up after 26 years. What other news could be more severe? Uche and I broke up three days ago. So right now, I have no one. They both turned to look at her. How long have you been standing there? Phyllis asked, shocked. Long enough? She replied coolly. She was not going to show either of them how betrayed she felt. She ignored Amber. She was not going to dignify her presence by throwing a tantrum or showing her how hot she was. Felix, how am I broke? She concentrated on Felix and refused to glance at Amber, even as her heart broke all over again. Felix stared at her loss for words. He had never been this afraid in his life, never this sorrowful or regretful. Answer me. Mma, maybe you should sit down, Amber suggested. And Mma finally turned to her. She refused to let her see the pain in her heart. Hello, Amber. She managed a smile. Phyllis is right about one thing. I don't need you. You are 26 years, 6 months and 5 days late. You absolutely have no right to ask anything of me. Amber was visibly close to tears. I am waiting, Felix. Didn't you receive any kind of alert from United Bank? She saw the fear and worry on Phyllis's face and quickly rummaged in her bag for her phone. She immediately clicked on the debit alert. Her eyes widened in shock as she stared at the message. She staggered and was caught by Felix. She couldn't believe it. 80% of her money gone in three debit alerts? What is the meaning of this? Olu called me when he noticed the strange transactions. Investigations has been initiated. Somehow she couldn't hear Felix. She could see him talking but she couldn't hear him. She is in shock. She faintly heard Amber's words and felt her touch and that brought her back to reality. She jumped back from Amber's touch. Mma, take it easy. I am here. I will help, Amber said. Mma looked at her and suddenly she couldn't control her rage. Get out! Get out of here now! She watched as Amber recoiled from her outburst. Are you not going to? Very well, I would leave. 
she ran out of Phyllis's office in rage, filled with fear and sorrow. She was about to go to her studio but stopped and ran out of the boutique and kept running. When she got tired of running, she slowed to a walk. She didn't care that she cried openly. She didn't care where she was going. She just wanted to get away from all the pain and fear. Her hard-earned money gone? Just like that? How was it even possible? Who could have done this? Who did she offend? What about her exhibition? And all the investors and brand that partnered with her for the show? What was she going to say to them? No! She screamed and tried to block it all out of her mind. She put her hands over her ears as if that would steal her thoughts. What would she do? Who would she go to? Amber offered to help. No way! She shouted loudly, not caring that passerbys were looking at her strangely. She didn't have a mother. Her mother was dead, period. Phyllis knew all along who her mother was. He knew of her obsession with Amber when she was younger. And he never said the word, why? She asked as she angrily wiped tears from her eyes. What was the point in going on with this life? She lost Uche, lost her life earnings, lost Phyllis's trust. There was no point in any of these anymore. The horn blaring behind her brought her back to the awareness of her surroundings. What was she going to do? She asked herself. Who would she go to? She stopped and doubled over, breathing hard, trying to calm herself. She needed to go home first of all and consider her options. She could accept Amber's offer, she thought. It was the least she could do after all these years. But she stifled that idea before it could take hold. She could go to Uche, she considered. Not an option, she said to herself. Uche would only laugh at her. Another home bled behind her and she decided to go home. She was not going to achieve anything by getting herself killed. A car stopped beside her and she heard Phyllis call her name. Mma refused to listen and kept walking. Mma, please, I can explain. Mma could hear Uche saying the same words to her a few days back. Why do people always say that when they had already betrayed you? What was there to explain? She asked herself. He knew who her mother was all these years and never said anything. She stopped and turned to Felix and dashed her tears away. Why, Felix? Come in and I will explain. Explain? What is there to explain? She asked bitterly. There might not be much for me to explain to you, but I can hardly do the little there is on the road. Her curiosity won over her bitterness and she heaved a sigh and got into his car. In the still of the night, I think of you. My heart beats with every thought of you. You're the one I can't let go in your arms. I find my home, love, sweet love. It's you I'm dreaming of